know, to keep things interesting, I've come up with using some other different brands of ink so we can see what colour ranges we get. It's always a good experiment. I've got a new picture, which obviously I need to now work out the aspect ratio. So I've got my piece of watercolour paper. I'm putting my picture on my bottom left hand corner, moving my water over there, lining up my ruler through the bottom left corner, through the bottom right hand corner, and it gives me this point up here. Alright, it's quite tall and thin, I'm actually pretty close to an A5 piece of paper. Just trimming off a little bit on the top, which actually probably wouldn't have counted because it could have become sky. So, I've got to draft this down. Um, I can look at putting that horizon line in. One, two, three, four, five. So it's approximately one fifth. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's about that amount. Just by eye. Sweeping angle over there. Now hold that pencil, get that angle in. Then I've got my mountain here. Volcano, I don't know, I'm sure someone's going to correct me. Just plot that in there. We've got the other one coming up to there. A few bits coming out. And then the top of a crater. Looks like around here. With some amazing steam or clouds. So let's just finely tune up that drawing. So my hands slide down the pencil, getting a few bumps and kinks, creating that bit of the hill. Then I've got that bit of the hill, and then just swizzle that one in over there. I'm looking at this negative space. I've got this shadow that's coming up. And it slopes around there. We got a little bit of horizon detail that's coming along here. Oh, there's some little bits in here, just to the left of this point. I can see the other side, the top of the mountain, and I got this lovely arched mountain top which kind of goes in there we're gonna have steam we get all these beautiful veins coming in here now really if i was you i'd take a rubber and i just clean that up so you can't see the pencil lines and i find a rubber quickly oh, oh i can so let's just take those off keep it nice crisp and clean as a drawing horizon in. A bit more crisp, a bit more dark, but you can see it. Hopefully everyone can see that. Just like so. Okay, let's bring it back out how we get some colour mixing and make it exciting. Put the rubber to one side. Right. So what have I got here then? God, I have got some Winsor and Newton blue ink. I've got some, oh no, that says orange. That's not gonna be a good idea, is it, orange? I thought that was strawberry, but I can't find the strawberry yet. So that means I'm back to the old flame red. Uh, I've got some yellow as well. And I've got some black. You see I've got Liquitex, bit of Winsor & Newton, bit of Dela. Keep it interesting, get a different color range. Makes it really nice to work on. I've got my jam jar of water. And of course, a palette to mix some colours on, which is just a recycled bit of plastic from some container. No expense spared, as always. Then a selection of brushes. Okay, And these aren't anything special, they're just ones I've picked up from all over the place. You can see here the handle's falling off this one. This one is a coffee bean, um, coffee machine cleaning brush from a barista. But that's a different story. So, 
I've got a water bottle spray, which I think will come in very handy for this, and you'll see what I mean why in a moment. I also have a piece of kitchen roll, and I would highly recommend having a bit of tissue or kitchen roll at hand with something like this. We're gonna need it for just softening out these white, puffy steam clouds. So starting off, as always, we're gonna work light to dark. I'm gonna take my yellow, give it a bit of a shake, Put that down like so. <coughs> then grab a brush, add a little bit of water, like so. And I'm gonna just plot that down. So I can see some yellow up here. And remember, I always say paint what you can see, not what I can see, because you'll find that your printouts will be slightly different from what I can see. A little bit of yellow down here and a little bit of yellow just slapping in down over here look at the direction of your brush marks look at the tone of yellow you might want to generate you could take some water and just soften it out like so and then I would take some tissue and I would just blot out some of that because we're gonna need some of the white veining of the paper to come through okay and I'm gonna Take out a little bit of that so it's not so bright because it is a tad bright. Inks always are. Now I'm going to go in with some green. I reckon there's a lot of nice green here. Oh, I just recognised the height. You see that yellow glow on the horizon? Oh God, can't miss that. So I'm going to just put that yellow across there. I'm going to add some water just to soften it down. And that means that I can put the blue on top and it'll look natural because it's a gradient of shade. I'm going to up my yellow just on that bottom lower section of the horizon line and take off some of that because it went a little bit wild. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and the, the problem with these is always you need a pipette to get them out and of course I don't have a pipette on me so I'm going to use a brush. I've got a clean brush. Always use a clean brush, don't stick a dirty brush in one of these pots or you'll get cross contamination. I'm going to get a decent quantity of blue out onto here. Okay, like so. Not as much blue as I'd like, but I'm going to put this brush to one side and just use it for getting my blue out so that I don't get cross contamination. Then I'm going to take this brush. I'm going to take some of that blue and I'm going to add into the yellow, get a little bit of a green mix going and start whacking that in. Now the yellow is still a bit wet which is good because it means that I'll get a few bleeds and the colour will be interacting on the paper looking a lot more natural. I'm going to leave a little bit there because I want a bit of brownie red, it's looking a bit brownie red for my liking. Which I probably should have put in by now, but you know, I've got quite up in my greens, what can I say? Okay, I'm just taking it off the edge of that green so it's not so sharp and bright. And I'm going to put in a bit of a patchwork of green down here that I can see. And there's a little bit down here. And there's a little bit up there. And then I'm going to take my spray bottle and give it a bit of a spray. Now it's blasted over my sky, so I'm quickly grab my tissue to take out my sky because I don't want green speckles, it would be like some algae attack. And while that's working its magic, I'm going to grab a little bit of red and make an orangey brown. So let's blob out some of the red there. Already got cross contamination on my hands, of course. I'm going to take some of that red, I'm going to add it into my green that I was using. And I'm going to start putting that in. Oh, that's a bit too red, isn't it? It needs a little bit more yellow. If I can get the yellow, oh, there you go. Like so, and I want a little bit 
in here. So this is all wet because of that water spray bottle. And that means it will just bleed out and look really interesting. Completely uncontrollable, don't get me wrong, but really interesting. And then I'm going to put some brown down here. I'll take a little bit of the water, soften it out, so I can see some of that yellow poke through. And then I want some white at the bottom. Right, dabbing it in. I get a little bit of roughly spotting wax. Ah, oh, just like that. That's what we're looking for. Got to get some veins going on here. So I'm going to spot, dab these on. Then I'm going to give myself. Right, I'm misting from a bit of a distance. You've got to get the distance right with the spray bottle, or it's all going to go peat tong. in that paint into the top. If you're too close to your spray bottle, you're gonna have serious problems with that. And I've got a little bit of brown that's just gonna sit in here. Because I gotta get that blue in. And there's a little bit of a like a gentle browny glow just up here on the horizon. Let's take that in. Like so. Just make it real gentle and faded because we want that distance illusion. Okay. And then generally what I need to do is that has to be dry before I can put the blue in. Or I could go mad and have a go at the blue now. Let's go mad and have a go at the blue now. So let's take a little bit more blue. Remember, I've got to get my brush out to get this blue out, which is a pain in the neck. Like so. Then I'm gonna grab a decent sized brush and I'm gonna go in. Now it's got a bit of water already on there from the spray bottle. Remember that we just quickly splurted in. This means that it might get a little bit bleedy around the edge, but if it's not bleedy enough, which it isn't for my liking, I'm gonna add a little bit of water just on the touch. Like so, and I'm gonna add some more up here. I'm going to just grab some of that water, lead out the edge a little bit more. It's a tad harsh for my liking. Okay, now I need some more water, more water, more blue. So, can I have some more blue? So let's take some of that blue out. Let's see if that's enough, shall we? Probably not. Let's get some more. You can't take it off. Better to add too little when it comes to ink. Uh, I'm going to come up here and do this sweeping curve. Like so. I'm going to add a little bit of water into that. Oh, leading a little bit too far and out of control. So take the tissue. Just take the edge off. In that around here. Okay, and that's going up some bits of cratery rock that's in shadow. Go a little bit higher. I see my 
blue is out of control over here. So again, keep an eye on it and take it off. Okay. A little bit of blue into the distance. It's gonna be about getting a brush with a little bit of water on just smoothing it out. So it looks au natural and not too sharp. My hands are getting covered in blue ink. But, hey ho, it's the way it goes. Yeah, increase my blue down here. So it makes it a little bit more of a cut off. So, a little bit of blue that seems to be escaping just because the paper's curving. Now if you taped your paper down, which I didn't do, you wouldn't have this problem. Okay, we need a little bit of blue. Yep, it's there. And I'm going to have to just smudge out the edge of that because it is way too crisp. Okay, now that is all pretty wet at the moment. It needs to dry before I can work that in seriously. But I'm just gonna slap in a little bit of blue for that upper sky section while I've got a little bit left. And I need to graduate it down. Right. I'll be using clean water, which mine isn't perfectly, because I'm working really fast, but it'll do. Bluey twang up the top there. Get a bit more blue while I can. Okay, now that looks pretty good. It needs to dry a little bit before I can go in for the next layer. It'll only take five minutes. It's ink, it's incredibly fast growing. Fast growing, incredibly flat, fast drying. So let's give it for the magic of film, five minutes, and then we'll go in with the detail. Okay, so it's drying out. Uh, my ink's still wet my palette, so that's great. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to my palette. And I'm going to be making some more lilac -y tones and some browns, really. Let's see how this pans out. Okay, brush over there, put this down, and wipe off the water before I lean in it. It's got all blue dye, and I'm just getting a smaller brush, and now I'm going to start working into the detail. Work from the top down, it's a little bit damp, I'm going to be really careful not to lean on that. So let's start off with the blue. I'm going to turn it into a purple, but first of all, I just want the blue. Now it has to be dry or it's going to blade. 
Yeah, you see how I can put the brush mark down, it's not bleeding, it's staying exactly where I'm leaving it. I'm going to take a little bit of water and just work that off. So I've got that crisp outer edge. And then I'm going to bring in another blue line there. The side as it blends out. And I'm going to have to just smooth that out. So, with a few kind of horizon line marks I could generate. So I've got to go a bit darker on the side to really show that side of the mountain just coming out. So Bit more stronger blue down here, and some dabbing and dubbing of it, being all very technical. And pay attention to where you want to bleed in and where you want to have a crisp edge, it'll give the idea of this wisping fog.
Quando abbiamo play. A little bit more blue, and I'm gonna to have to go with a lilac now. So specifically around here, it also looks like it should be a little bit in here. Take my lilac and I'm going to water it down. I'm going to throw a little bit in here for the smoky mist that's hazing over the mountain range.
stronger yellow actually in there. Okay, there you go, study number two.